Have you ever thought to yourself, if there was just an easy way where you could scrape all blog post titles or images from a website, or maybe you want to monitor your competitor's website to see whenever they make changes? This right here is Browse.ai, which can do exactly that, both scrape text and images, but also help you monitor websites for changes. So let's put it to a test. Now here we are in the Browse.ai platform and here you can see just an overview of the robots I've been playing around with and testing. And using Browse.ai you can set up two different types of robots. You can either choose to extract structured data and then put it into a CSV file or Google Sheets or you can monitor site changes and we will go through both of these. But to begin with we will start by extracting structured data. So here you can see that you can get a demo, you can see how you actually use this bot, but it is pretty straightforward. The first step here is that you enter the URL that you want to basically pull data from. You can choose whether you need to sign in for extracting this data. Maybe it's behind a login wall or paywall or something third. That is also here supported by clicking here. And then you can choose to either log in via session cookies or with a password. In this case, I will not use this feature. I will just start recording task. Now we are in a window where it's recording everything we're doing. So up here you can see that we have basically a robot and this robot is telling us that now we need to show what it is we need to do to extract data. So be aware that everything you click on right now, the robot will then imitate later on. So I will click OK understood. And I will not recommend you accepting cookies when you do this because then the robots sometimes fail. But scrolling down, you can see we have four different blog posts here. And I want to scrape each of these blog post titles because I want to save them in a sheet so I can have an overview of all my blog post titles. So I do that by clicking on the image up here of the robot. I then say capture list. And then I choose that I want to capture this list right here. Now I need to choose what text do I want. Do I only want the title? Do I want also the description or do I want both? I only want the title so I will click on this here. I will then choose whether I want to capture the link or the text and I want the text. So right here we have the visible text and I will now press enter to save this. Now we need to tell what is this type of text and it is a blog post title. So I'll just write blog post title and save it. Now here you can choose whether you want to capture more than what is showing and that you can do by using pagination here. So you can tell it that either there is pagination by loading more, maybe you have numbers that you need to click on or something third. For now there are no more items I want to load and I maximum want 10 and I will call this list blog post titles. So now we are ready to capture the list and I'll now say OK understood up here. So now we have told everything the robot needs to do in order to fetch all the blog post titles. So I will then again click on the robot and press finish recording. It has now uploading our recording to browse.ai. It has given it a robot name. This you can always change. I will then press save and now it is basically running the robot in the background. So you can see it's opening Chrome, it's navigating to the URL and then it's pulling all the blog post titles. So you can see right here it only pulled an empty one basically and then it pulled why time management is important for students. But there were four. So what you can do is you can go down here and then you can retrain the robot. When you retrain the robot you basically get the same view where we go up and we say capture list. And this time then maybe let's try and click on the object itself. So now we have the object and now we are clicking on this text right here. So now you can see all of them are highlighted and I will capture the visible text again. Press enter, write blog post title. You can see it's suggesting it. Save it, again give it the same name and then I'll press capture list. So now we are back in browse.ai and it is again running the robot. And now you can see that we got all four blog post titles. So sometimes you need to tweak it a little bit to make sure that you get the result you want. And here is one thing that I will discuss later on. These four rows here, they have cost me now four credits. I will deep dive more into why that is important in the pricing section. But here we can see we also get a screenshot and we get the text itself. Now let's try and go back and make a different type of robot. 
Again, I will say build new robot, extract structured data, and then let's see if we can extract the images itself. So now you can see again, we are on the block. If I want to do the same as before, I say capture list and click on the images. But what I really want to show you is capture screenshot. So here we can choose to either capture a selection that we do, we can capture the entire page or only the visible part, which we can see in our screen port right now. So I want to capture the entire page and I'll then call it planter.io block. I will save it and now we have this one ready. So again, I will say finish recording. We are now back in browse.ai. I will save this one and now we should receive a screenshot of the entire page. And this is great because this you can actually schedule and I will show you with a different type of robot how we can do that just in a moment. But until then, then you can see here it has captured the screenshot. The final screenshot down here, we can see how it looks like. Up here it didn't fetch all the images, so maybe there is some missing support for lazy load. It fetched the first image, but it's also loaded a little bit funny. But that is how that works. I can now say that this looks good and then I can save it. See, I can now choose to run this task just right now. It will then create a new screenshot or I can bulk run tasks. I can also go to the history to see when it has been run. I can see the monitor where I can add a new monitor. So here I can set it up to schedule. So I can say that every day it needs to run a screenshot of this block. It needs to be a default monitor as a name and then save monitor. This way I can then monitor this website to see whenever they make changes. But for that task, there is an even more interesting way of doing that. For the robot, we can also integrate using Sapier, webhooks or something third in order to take our content and put it over into a third app. It's very easy to set up in here. You can see that we basically get an integration with Sapier here and then you can start setting it up. You can also set the settings for the robot, which is basically the URL, the name and some different elements you can set. But now let's go back and check out the other type of robot, which is monitor site changes. So in here again, you see the same screen. Now it's showing a different demo video. And again, we can enter a URL. This time I'll just enter the front page. We can now start recording the task. So now we are again back on the website. And here we can choose again to take the robot and then we can capture list, text or screenshot. So if you do a screenshot, then you capture the entire page maybe, and then you check whenever there are changes. You can also just do text. So in this case, I want to track this H1 up here. So I'll say capture text and capture the H1 up here. I want to know every time this one changes. I'll just call it very simple headline. And now we have this robot ready. I will then finish again the recording. So you can see we're again back here. We have the same setup. I will save it. And now it is already showing me how I want to be notified in this case per email and how often it needs to run. So I will save the monitor to notify me per email and it needs to run every single day. So you can see it has captured the text here. We have a final screenshot of how it's looking. Again, there are some elements it's not loading on these final screenshots, but everything is looking correct. So I will now say that this looks good. Otherwise, as you saw before, then you can run it again and train it again differently and try to click on some different elements to make sure that it works for you. But now we have set up two to three different types of robots and that's how easy it is to set up browse.ai and make sure that it monitors the right thing, it captures the right text and the possibilities for using this is really endless. You can also go to a competitor's website, scrape all their blog post titles so you get some ideas of what you can write about. Then you can take those blog post titles, maybe take the URL and then attach to a third party API using Savior to see which of these blog posts get the most traffic. That is just one example. There are endless types of examples that you can use browse.ai for. It is really only the imagination and the pricing of course, which are limiting us. Now taking a look at the pricing, there is one thing you need to be aware of. They do have a free plan and they have three paid plans as well. And all of these plans, they differ on limits and especially the credits is what you need to be aware of because the credits define how much you can use browse.ai. One credit is usually one scrape of text or an image. So let's say that you're scraping a website of 15 blog posts. That will be 15 credits if you're only scraping the title, of course. 
If you also want to scrape the description, maybe the content, then you have to time it up by three. So just be aware of this. And when we look at the paid plans, I feel the amount of credits are very low. You can't almost scrape anything and then you will hit the limit. It's very limited. So I hope they will increase those. Because when we compare to the alternatives, then there are two types of alternatives. First, we have import.io and site. These types of companies, you need to book a demo and go through with one of their sales consultants. You can't just sign up yourself. But the other alternative, which reminds more of browse.ai is ABFI. ABFI, you can just get started by signing up again, completely free. And ABFI has higher limits. You get a lot more of credits to use. And it works more or less in the same way with these credits where the more you scrape, the more credits you have to pay from your account. But with ABFI, those limits are just a lot higher. Now, when we dive into the future of browse.ai, then they're working on a lot of different elements. But I have picked out four things I will see very interesting. And the first thing is that they're adding more than 50 pre-built templates for scraping text. This will help both you and I to onboard easier, to easier get an idea of what browse.ai can, because I think it can do much more than what we think it can actually do. Then they are also working on making themselves independent of the Chrome extension, because right now you can only use browse.ai using Chrome and using their Chrome extension, because as you saw in the walkthrough, the Chrome extension is used to train the bot to tell it how it needs to do. Then they are also elaborating their API. And with this elaborate API, we will be able to do a lot more using Zapier with the data that we get. And last but not least, then they're adding an Integrately integration. And Integrately is basically the same as Zapier. We just get more options to choose whether we want to use Zapier, Integrately, or maybe even something third in the future. Now, after using browse.ai for some time, I really like that it do works well on JavaScript heavy websites. I like their Zapier integration, and then it's very easy to use with the Chrome extension. The things I wish they would improve is definitely the pricing. And then the fact that they're very depending on their Chrome extension. Browse.ai is a really powerful tool that can be used to save a lot of manual hours. Though there is a but, their credit limits are just too low and it's really limited in what we can really use Browse.ai for. And therefore I want to give Browse.ai three and a half stars. Their core functionality is working great, but the limits on the credits are a huge setback. And then the fact that we can only use it using Chrome. When they get to change that, that will be a game changer. That's my review. Thank you so much for watching. Let's catch up on the next one.